All right, tumbling bullets, old versus new. What I have today, I have some Fort Scott TUI in 38 Special, but the old classic bullet, the Super Police. These happen to be 213 grain, and they are 35 Remington bullets. And these were actually given to me by Angela over at uh, Lead Bullets for Life like two and a half years ago, and I still had a whole bunch of them. Really cool bullets. He, um, cut, he um, powder coated all of them. So 213 grains, very, very heavy for caliber. Um, you look at it next to a 158 grain lead around those bullet, a lot more bullet because it's a rifle bullet. Now the whole point of the super police bullet was to take a bullet and try to get it going about 700 feet per second because at that velocity, if you look at the ogive on this, the, the angle of the bullet, it's very long and a very um, gradual curve to that bullet. And what happens with that is at about 700 feet per second, that nose will start to destabilize when it hits something, which will cause it to tumble. And I believe these are like 93 one hundredths of an inch long. So that's a 93 one hundredths of an inch hole. Like, you know, like that would be how big a, a, a huge 45 hollow point would be expanded to. Now the TUI is something completely different here. These are only 81 grains and they are just solid copper and they're designed to tumble. So these are new school, a lot less bullet mass there compared to the Super Police. And just for reference here, I put a mark how far down in the case these bullets will be. You could see on the TUI how far they are down in it just based on, you know, a crimp. And you can see they used a, a taper crimp, which is a little odd for a revolver cartridge. But with the Super Police, I put that mark down there. That bullet is all the way down in that case. So really what you've got going on here is something that's actually pretty low powder charge and really, really low recoil and velocity to, despite the fact that it's got that heavy bullet. But because it's such a heavy bullet, it carries a lot of energy. So very interesting loads here. And I am going to run through both barrel lengths, my 4-inch and my 2-inch barrel to kind of see what I'm getting. So... We're going to go through the chronograph, see what kind of velocity and accuracy we're getting at the same time. Then I am going to shoot through my 10% clear ballistic target here. I am going to use four layers of denim, even though these are not expanding. I'm just trying to stay as close to protocol as possible when it comes to that. However, my protocol is a little different because I use one quarter inch medium density fiberboard to kind of simulate ribs or sternum and into more clear ballistics. And typically this takes away about two inches. Um, it typically equates to about two inches of clear ballistics, even though it's only a quarter inch thick because it's, you know, it's medium density fiber pour. It's really hard. It's harder than pine or anything. Really represents ribs or sternum really, really well. And then I'm going to shoot at my ISPC steel silhouette target just to kind of see if they're actually accurate. If any of these rounds are accurate at any distance, because if they tumble in air, which I don't think they'll tumble in the air, then they might not be accurate, but we'll see anyway. So let's get started with the test. All right, I'm about five yards from the target, four yards from the chronograph. I'm gonna start up with the super police here and our four inch barrel. And we'll see what kind of velocity and accuracy we get with this. This recoil should be really, really low. So let's see what we got. Six seventy four. Six eighty two. Six seventy five. Six ninety five. Six seventy eight. Except for one that I pulled. Really good accuracy. The point of aim is actually pretty close. Let's try the snub nose with these rounds. All right, two inch barrel. I'll aim for the same spot. We'll see what happens. Six fifty. Six thirty one. Six forty nine. Six forty nine. Six thirty one. Really consistent from barrel length to barrel length. Yeah, we're losing very, very little. Let's try the Fort Scott TUI now. All right, Fort Scott TUI. I don't have as many of these rounds, so I'm only going to turn it off a couple. I had to put black marker on these. The solid copper doesn't want to chronograph very well, but let's see what we get in the four inch barrel. 81 grain bullets here. 1389, impressive. 
That was not impressive. <laughs> to change by over 300 feet per second. So, we'll go single action with these in the snob, see what we get. 1180. 1078. That did not read, but these are definitely not very consistent rounds. Now let's hit our ballistics gel block with these rounds and just see how they compare to each other. All right, first up, we have our new school tumbling rounds, our Sport Scott TUI. I'm gonna shoot one through the four inch barrel, see what it does. 38 special. So even though my bullet impact was actually an inch and a half into the block, it actually exited out. Um, but it does look like it tumbled, and where it exited out is about 15 inches here, which would be about 17 inches if you had the fiberboard. Let me try it one more time in the 4-inch barrel. All right, 4-inch barrel. I'll center it a little bit better, I guess, and we'll see what happens. Yeah, that thing tumbled, ripped into my bottom here. And it's just kind of sitting on the bottom. So this is kind of a skewed result. You know, 15 and three quarters, 17 and three quarters if we count this. It definitely tumbled. One tumbled significantly out left, one tumbled down. Let's try the snub nose. All right, Fort Scott with the snub nose. Let's see what we get here. So that one, uh, a little bit less damage, but more predictable. And we're up here at about 16 and a half, which would be about 18 and a half without the MDF. Now let's move on to the Super Police and we'll see how those compare. All right, 213 grain Super Police. Let's see what this does in our gel. All right, so that one's interesting. We don't see as much damage. It obviously did tumble because we're sticking out here with the, the butt of our bullet coming out right here. So that wouldn't happen unless it tumbled. So let's take a look and see what we got total penetration here. So what we're looking at here is that base of our bullet stop almost exactly at 13 and a quarter so that'd be 15 and a quarter let's try the snub nose and see how that does all right snub nose with the super police let's see what happens all right That was really weird and interesting. That one went all the way up. It almost came out the top here. And I will actually move this because we get such a good view of it over here if I move it up like this. So let's line this up. That is lined up about right. So what we're seeing here is it is at... Oh, wow. 12 even so instead of 12 and a quarter 12 even that's 14 even and we can see right here it has some pretty good tumbling damage just move this around this is gives us a little bit better view here of of our tumbling damage um, now it does look like the Fort Scott and all of the rounds show more of, of our temp of our permanent cavity however 
look at this uh, super police here. Get this sawdust stuff here. It's hard hard to see, but the super police is really really close here. On this one, it's up here. It's really really close. You just have to get the right angle to see. So, what I'm seeing here, I mean, if we look at our penetration, it's actually a little more ideal with the super police. Um, you know, this might be more ideal for some things, like a hard barrier. But and straight on, just self-defense with our rib simulation, you know, this is perfect. Absolutely perfect. And when we look at it from this angle, it looks like it's closer to 13 inches, which would be 15 inches. I guess a different view kind of shows different depths, but really, really similar here. You know, here's our average. Our average TUI is more like 17. If we add that in, our average super police is more like 13 and three quarters. So neither of them truly failed. But let's shoot from a little bit of a distance that might give a little bit better idea of how these rounds shoot so i think i'm gonna go back from 50 yards because i need a little bit more distance to you know try to induce a miss to make it a little bit more dramatic if i do miss so let's try that so i'm not going to measure these bullets because there's really no point they're not going to expand because they're not expanding but our fort scott tui of course they're going to be the same um, these are copper, so it's a really hard metal. They're not going to deform in any way. As for our super police, there is a little bit of a difference here. Here's our snub nose load bullet, and here's our four inch. And our four inch has a little bit of a bowing in it, or it's just kind of bent a little bit. So you can tell, you know, even though we're only, you know, close to 50 feet per second more with the four inch, it's enough to bow it out a little bit. And if we look at here compared to the Fort Scott TUI, yeah, these are more than two and a half times the weight of these not only that but they're more densely packed with their weight if these were 213 green like these they would actually be longer than these because these are lead so a lot of dense stuff going on here a lot of damage so that's a close-up of those all right my muzzle is going to be from 50 yards up here i have it marked um what i mean by dramatic is not necessarily dramatic but i mean like i could hit that that target with a baseball from 25 yards i want to you know aim right on on it with a better probability of getting a miss and see what happens so first up i have three rounds of these tuis so i only have five rounds left so three for this four inch and two for the snub and we'll see what happens at 50 yards with uh, 38 special tuis Looks like I got a couple of hits. You can barely see it from here, but it looks like a little bit low. Let's try the snub in single action just to make sure I get a hit if I can. I don't have a clue where those hit. Just not enough momentum in that dirt to even make the dirt move. So let's try these super police now. So if you wondered why they're about the same velocity in the snub versus the four inch, it's because they're pretty much maxed out their efficiency um, in a shorter barrel. So it's kind of like a, um, a Federal HST 38. They're pretty much maxed out because they're so deep in the case. Now let's try our Super Police 38s. So they'll shoot really, 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 really high for me. So let's try the snub nose and see how that does. All right, so not extraordinarily accurate, but these are really quiet. Let me try something. A decibel rating is something a lot of people are really concerned about when it comes to self-defense and these did not have a lot of sound i want to see what one sounds like without hearing protection
So they're shooting high, but there's absolutely nothing. There's no ringing in my ear. There's nothing. Let me try a few more. That's awesome. There's there's nothing like that. Let me try it again. So not super accurate. It looks like I have one more left. Let me try it in the snub like that. I'll shoot one in the snub. I want to see if that that um, distance and, and muzzle length will make a difference to my hearing. So a little bit louder, louder than this. It, it's verging on getting kind of a muffled sound. Not quite. So if, if these would have hurt my ears even slightly i would have stopped after one and i fired what like 13 rounds of those those were extraordinarily quiet extraordinarily quiet yet when they hit they have some serious thump those are awesome i can hear everything fine i can hear the bugs in the grass so decibel rating matters and and i could see if you ever you know if you're hired to shoot these even inside eh, you're not gonna hurt your hearing um, the only way it's going to hurt your hearing is if you had it probably within a, a foot from your ear or something like that. Or if you're like in an enclosed case space like a car, maybe. Because if I would have done that even with 9mm, I'd be like, ow. <laughs> so that's what you get today, Super Police versus the TUI. Um, definitely, I'm going to say they're very short range rounds because I'm not reliably able to hit anything at any distance with them. And with the... With the super police actually to aim you know maybe six inches below the bottom of that target at 50 yards to hit but when it did hit they hit with a lot of momentum there uh, so that's what you get today uh, both are pretty equal but i'm liking these super police for the ability to shoot them without hearing detection and not really worry about it and i'll throw this out there i don't want to get in trouble with youtube or anything like that all i'm going to say is hodge john tight group 3.2 Low enough to fit in the cylinders, in the cylinder chambers. That's all there is to those. So that's as you get today. So as always, comment, share, and like, and thanks for watching.